Hello everyone. Uh, today I am going to discuss one of the enhanced sampling method called umbrella sampling. So what we do in uh, molecular dynamics, we model a system and generally vary the temperature or pressure and mimic the system to predict macroscopic thermodynamics and dynamic observable of the systems. <clears throat> so we consider a model system of an atom that can be defined by the coordinate qi and momentum pi in a phase space. So we can write the Hamiltonian as a function of coordinate qi and pi that is equal to the kinetic energy plus potential, this potential energy. And in molecular classical molecular dynamics, this uh, potential energy term is deal with this following equation, where the first three terms constitute intramolecular energy due to bonding and connectivity and the last term describe non-bonded interactions. Now the probability density of finding a system in a phase space that is equal to the this Poisson factor divided by the normalization factor. And if we replace this Hamiltonian by the kinetic and uh, by the energy terms, so we can separate the uh, kind of, uh, uh, exponential function of kinetic energy and the exponential function of potential energy. And these two terms are independent to each other, so we can separately solve these two quantities. Now, what is this uh, normalization factor? This normalization factor is a, the all possible conformation of the system. So we can express the normalization factor by this equation. And this is related to partition function by this following equation where the h is a Planck's constant. <clears throat> and we know that the partition function provides the number of states that are accessible to particular temperature. So if we, uh, for example, a protein with n possible conformation, and this is the energy state E1, E2, E3, E4, E4 and so on, and kVt is the thermal energy. So only these three energy states is populated at this given temperature. So we can say the partition function is equal to three. Now the partition function is directly related to free energy by this following equation and equivalently we can write this free energy is equal to the integral of this uh, kinetic and this uh, um, Boltzmann factor. And what is the free energy? The free energy determine how a process will proceed and the probability that system will adopt a given state. And what is the significance of free energy? From free energy, we can calculate the entropy, internal energy of the system, and also we can predict the melting point if we, if we construct the phase diagram as a function of temperature free energy. Also, we uh, calculate the rate of reaction by using iron equation from the uh, free energy. But problem is that we cannot calculate the absolute free energy because the actual reference is unknown. Now, the canonical partition function for a system of an identical particle interacting via the potential energy that is that we can represent as integral of the momentum term and the and the potential energy term so since in this equation the momentum integration can be evaluated independently so the partition function can also be expressed in this only the uh, potential energy integral and note that in Hamiltonian, the kinetic energy term is universal term that appear in all such Hamiltonian, it is only the potential energy that determine the particular property of the system. So we can only, the, uh, only integrate the uh, potential energy term to find out the particular interest of the property. Dante. Hello. Uh, 
Yeah, in the previous slide, you mentioned that we cannot evaluate absolute value of the energy. So, yeah. where do we need the absolute value of the energy? If we calculate the uh, internal energy of the system, we have need to, uh, absolute free energy. We cannot calculate the internal energy of the system from relative free energy. We can calculate so many properties from uh, relative free energy, but not internal energy of the system. Okay. No, we can. Yeah, we cannot measure like experimentally. We cannot measure the absolute value of free energy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so the link between the microscopic uh, thermodynamic property and microscopic state contained partition function. If the ensemble is NVT and NPT via this Helmholtz energy, then the ensemble is NVT. We can give uh, we can get Helmholtz free energy by this equation and gives free energy from this equation. So I mentioned we cannot calculate the absolute free energy, but we can calculate the relative free energy if the system of the state A goes to system of a state B we can calculate the free energy um, from uh, system A to B. So the free energy difference from system A to B, we can calculate by the free energy of a state B minus free energy of state A. So in terms of partition function, we can express the difference of free energy by the um, KBT loan partition function of a state B minus KBT loan partition function of state A. And simply we can write the difference of free energy is equal to minus KBT loan partition function of a state B upon partition function of a state A. Now the free energy difference can also be expressed in by minus KBT loan ZB upon ZA, where Z Z A and Z B are the configurational partition function for state A and B respectively. Where the configurational partition function A is equal to the only integral of the potential energy term. And potential energy of a state A and similarly Z B is the, the configuration uh, partition function of Z B that is equal to the integral of a uh, potential energy term of a state B. In this ratio of full partition function, QB upon QA reduces to ratio of configuration partition function, ZB to ZA, because the momentum integration cancel out from this ratio. So if here we put the um, full uh, function of partition function, the uh, kinetic energy part is canceled out so the only the potential energy term is our interest. Now, from this configurational partition function, we can calculate the free energy perturbation by deriving this uh, few simple uh, mathematical steps. So, so here we can write the configurational partition function is integration upon exponential of uh, um, integral of potential energy term of a state B. And now I am introducing here the these two term that is equivalent to one. And simple re rearrangement give this uh, following form. And now I divided the Configurational partition function ZB by ZA that give this following equation. And this is give this average form of this uh, potential energy term. Now the free energy difference from a state A to B is equal to minus KBT loan average over the E exponential of the uh, potential energy of 
state B minus potential energy of state A. And this equation is known as free energy perturbation formula that is proposed by Zawajin in 1954. Now, what is a potential of mean force? The free energy surface along the chosen coordinate is known as potential of mean force. So this uh, free energy surface is called potential of mean force. <clears throat> so when the system is solvent, the potential of mean force incorporates the solvent effect as well as intrinsic interaction between the two particles. And also the various, <clears throat> also in, uh, in umbrella sampling method, we simply get the potential of mean force. Also, one of the uh, easiest way to calculate potential of mean force is the uh, this is calculated from the radial distribution function by using this equation. But I earlier mentioned the we cannot get absolute free energy, so we calculate the relative free energy. But what the problem is to calculate the free energy is that if we in our molecular dynamic simulation, if we uh, run the simulation that and the energy barrier is very high, the system is trapped in basin A because here the, uh, the free energy barrier is too much high. So the system do not cross this barrier and that will take very long time to cross this barrier. So we need some enhanced sampling method that sample the, this uh, particular reaction coordinate to achieve the system of interest. <clears throat> now, one of the problem of the free energy calculation that does not have the form of ensemble average. So therefore it cannot be calculated directly from the time average. And the problem is with the, the sampling of the phase space. So we have an exact method of computing a partition function and associated thermodynamic quantities. However, this depend on us accurately sampling the entire configuration method, and that is impossible. In general, MD simulation do not do an adequate job of sampling configurational space unless run for very, very long time. So therefore, free energy calculation require a more advanced method. And one of the, the method is umbrella sampling method. And what umbrella, what in umbrella sample is umbrella sampling. The umbrella sampling is a technique used to improve the sampling of the system where ergodicity is hindered by the form of systems energy landscape. And it was first suggested by Torre and Velo in 1977. So the basic idea behind the umbrella sampling is that we can bias a force, bias or force the system to sample a particular region. So if we, our system of interest is A to B, so we bias the, this, uh, this phase space to achieve A to B. <clears throat> now recalling the free energy per perturbation that is also expressed in this uh, potential energy difference by this following equation. And equivalently, we can write by rearranging this equation in this form of this equation. Now, in order to sample the both A and B spaces, we now introduce a weight function that is defined by pi qn to replace the Boltzmann factor. Now, here we introduce this uh, weight function and we can get this factor. And that we can write also in the form of average of the potential energy term of uh, state B and the potential energy term of state A. <clears throat> so in order to order that both the numerator and denominator to be non-zero, the weight function should be have considerable 
overlap between the spaces of A and B. So, in order to umbrella sampling to work well, we need to make a good choice of pi QN. And a common choice is to make the biasing potential is quadratic because this quadratic function is easy, easy to solve. So in this potential energy term, we, we add weight function. This is the Hooke's potential. And so the biasing potential is simply this uh, pi QN exponential and that is equal to the exponential of this this total potential that is the uh, actual potential plus biasing potential and what we do in uh, umbrella sampling we divided the reaction coordinate in several window and apply the bias potential in each window to um, sample the this uh, inter interested phase space This is likely having enough um, umbrella to complete the cover the street. So the uh, each window we apply the uh, here the umbrella in each window to get system from A to B. And from this we can calculate the uh, bias probability. And from this bias probability we can uh, use the warm code to find out the uh, free energy surface. And one of the example of potential of mean force calculation from umbrella sampling is the evaporation of water that is uh, studied by Chandler group, where the potential of mean force for removing water molecule from interface is barrierless. So we can here see that this uh, there is no barrier from uh, for condensation of the water. And also, to evaporate a water molecule near the surface, it requires only a spontaneous kinetic energy in direction of normal to liquid vapor interface to go to the liquid to vapor state. So in an, now, this is the same summary of the uh, today's discussion. In the umbrella sampling method, the reaction coordinate is divided into window in the, into several windows and series of independent simulation are carried out where the system is restrained by Hooke's potential to sample within each window. The resulting histogram of the sample value of the reaction coordinate in each simulation are then recombined to reconstruct the unbiased potential of free energy profile. And next uh, meeting, we I will discuss how this uh, you know, weighted histogram method Combine the uh, um, prob uh, probability bias potential and give the uh, free energy surface. And also, there is one weakness of umbrella sampling method that come from its re relative high computational cost. The high energy part of this phase space need to be sampled adequately, and there need to be adequate overlap between each sampling win window. Thus, in practice, implementation of umbrella sampling usually require a time consuming trial and error process to identify the most suitable spacing of simulation window and associated force constant for biasing potential. So this is all about today's discussion. Hello. Yeah, I want to see that uh, slide of this uh, free energy perturbation means that equation. Alien okay. average. Okay. Uh, the next slide, I think. Mm -hmm. The next slide. Sorry. Uh, means free energy perturbation, there you write. The free yeah. energy, yes, 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 yeah. Yeah. yes, 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 um, yes, 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 this equation, okay.
and simply yeah gdp is this equation yeah yeah uh, this one this, this and is equal. i write this is normally equal to 1 mm -hmm. because this is minus term and this is plus term mm -hmm. so here just rearrange ah, this is okay yes yes and when you divided this by z a z a okay then uh, they are in the right side means uh, the right side part is same na in upper equation and lower equation there should be a... i missed something uh, means in the you you means uh, if i, I compare you. the last expression of zb in the upper part of your slide and zb by z a you Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This part is. I understand that we have to divide it by J day. Means okay. here is a division yeah, yes, by J day is missing. So okay, if I divided this integral equation by J day, this will be average. Okay, okay, okay. This is yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This would be J divided by uh, yeah J day. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, actually, in this uh, right side, I missed. Uh, <laughs> by division, day. division of J day. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. That's why it creates confusion. Now this is a ln average of uh, okay j a. This is we can write it as average. Okay, means free energy is uh, free energy of F A B equal to ln j b by j a. Okay, yeah. so that's why. And this uh, ln average, this actually reminds me very well known. Means this kind of average exponential average. If we try to compute it directly, average uh, of exponent, yes. then uh, it is very less converging. Means uh, very poorly converge. Uh, this kind of uh, average of exponential, and here this well-known cumulant uh, approximation comes. So there we can we can transfer this. Average of exponential to exponential of average, so that okay, uh, okay. yes, so they are this kind of cumulant, and they are this mayor mayor's theory also we can derive from there. Oh yeah, mayor's step function. Yes, yes. So this is a this this kind of uh, expression comes everywhere in spectroscopy also. This average of exponential also comes. So they are we use this cumulant approximation, and we can take only few cumulant. Beauty of cumulant approximation is that means uh, as those things are all statistical. Okay, yes. So we can uh, means mostly those are uh, those can be approximated by Gaussian. So only second if we take only second order part. Then we can exactly evaluate. Means I am talking about the evaluation of this, this expression okay. directly. So yeah, we can uh, use it. Uh, means if we u u v minus u a, then uh, we can uh, separate it in terms of one body term, two body term, three body term like that. So we can truncate it easily. Okay. So this is one comment I wanted to prepare. And, and one more thing that this reweighting is means um, we we mm -hmm. have now understood that uh, okay the uh, uh, need of this enhanced yes need of this enhanced sampling and how we can deal with that that in Seas Seas presentation there is extended Lagrangian. Okay. Yes. But your your presentation uh, means we can use the same logic like thermodynamic perturbation, and yeah. use a use a means uh, a potential in such a way that we can um, we can uh, make the system in different points. We can put the system in different points along the reaction coordinate. But uh, reweighting part. Uh, we need one presentation from one discussion. Uh, oh. I think Sreya could discuss in next in our next um, meeting. That reading is 
very much important uh, what i uh, heard that from from nayar sir labs also that project task was stopped due to they could mm -hmm. not solve exactly reweighting means they are stuck in reweighting but but other concept was clear earlier so reweighting is a important point in the enhanced sampling okay next yeah yeah next i yeah, either sreya or yeah Prashant Bhaiya, huh. you, you were saying that using this umbrella, this sampling technique, we yeah. can force the like, to sample a particular region or particular area. Yeah. So in, yes. in your system, suppose you are studying this evaporation uh, process. So yes. you are sampling only the uh, this interfacial part or you are using this? Not interfacial part, only uh, I sample in a uh, only the jet coordinate mm. okay um, the whole jet coordinate then no no not whole jet coordinate only uh, one molecule okay for one molecule you sample the for one, one, one uh, i sample the uh, jet coordinate of the you can you can go to that slide of chandler then i think you can explain yeah, better the, uh, same technique Chandler used here. Uh, sample mm -hmm. the um, each window in the direction of the, this A is actually not a, a jet coordinate. There's a uh, actually the perpendicular to the instantaneous surface. Okay, this is a uh, different idea, and I use. Uh, Simply Z coordinate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you okay. So you use umbrella sampling of a particular molecule which is evaporating on the, along the Z coordinate. Yeah, yes, yes. And so you use many umbrellas. So these umbrellas they have uh, between successive umbrellas they have different uh, time step uh, yeah. time windows or yeah huh, yeah. The, each oh. umbrella is uh, equilibrated and for uh, and run production. So the uh, this um, particular window is sampled well. Okay. Otherwise, uh, there is very uh, uh, very large error bar in it. Mm -hmm. And this J is, uh, uh, what is this J? J is a reaction coordinate. Okay. Mm. Mm, okay. Uh, Prashant Bhaiya, uh -huh. uh, just a comment. So you are talking about the uh, measurement of free energy, like calculation of free energy, absolute free energy. So you are saying that uh, yeah. we could, yeah, we cannot calculate the absolute value of P energy, right? Yeah. So actually, that is not true. Like experimentally, actually, or yeah, experimentally, we cannot measure absolute value of P energy, but computational from the computational perspective, if we know the configuration partition function Q, then we can just use the equation minus KBT. And if Q. we know the actual That's partition function, then yes, yes. So like yeah, yeah. And, and that's why I'm saying the computational but, perspective. So yeah. computational the theoretical actual day, partition function that is also very difficult to calculate. No, 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 no. I'm not system. talking about yeah. I'm not talking about uh, analytical pure partition function form of the partition function. I'm just saying the computational. So what uh, we did computationally in is the sampling the probability distribution, right? So we can do that. Yeah. We can sample probability distribution in, in umbrella sampling also. You do, just do the probe You just sample the probability distribution, then use minus KVT L and Q equation to get the free energy. Free energy so yeah. from computationally and theoretically, we can compute or get free energy 
but experimentally we cannot measure absolute value of free energy we can only compare the rate like free energy barrier difference of free energy like mm, this. yes yes uh, here uh, so the yeah means uh, computationally also the internal mm -hmm. energy when we compute interaction mm -hmm. energy yes. yeah. and this is also not absolute mm -hmm. means we are uh, always relative to something I mean suppose for water uh, we are doing some quantum chemical calculation for a water mm -hmm. for a water molecule then yeah. the energy has no meaning I means if i uh, there is output we get the energy yeah yeah no no yeah obviously the interaction energy cannot be absolute here yeah means if the energy is not absolute then uh, this uh, okay. uh -huh, this partition function is not yeah yeah, yeah. No, no, but, but but main problem is a potential energy term that computational is, uh, case, very, we very don't complex. compute the interaction energy right we just use px probability distribution we sample probability distribution so when we get free energy curve, that means we are getting free energy, right? It's computationally. But we have no means. Yes, it is right that suppose let's say for harmonic oscillator. Okay. Mm -hmm. We get a free energy surface correctly, mm -hmm. but uh, right the this we can always shift the we, yeah, we yeah. means that that uh, means if I mean theoretically also we we cannot assign a absolute uh, y axis means yes, in, y -axis sense, it is, in, yeah. in relative sense it is uh, it is always same mm -hmm. it will be always fixed but uh, in absolute sense which means i i am i have plot a data Okay, mm -hmm. let's say harmonic oscillator modes potential, and uh, you plot a data by shifting it by ten plus ten. Then your data yeah. and my data is, both are correct. Means there is no point to distinguish. There is no way to distinguish between them which is correct, which is more correct. Or yes, yes there yes. is absolute absolute value of energy is uh, means it is very ill concept. I think. Absolute value of entropy is, I think that's why this third law of thermodynamics came. Yeah. Absolute value of entropy, we cannot do, compute. Right? We cannot compute, but uh, due to the third law of entropy, third law of thermodynamics, uh -huh. at least we can theoretically we can argue that there is a absolute entropy, and so this is zero. This value is zero. No, and no, no, the is, you know, we just that's the that's the approximation. Is right? yes, that is the is yes, means theoretically we have some understanding, means we have some common uh, assumption that entropy here entropy is zero. But uh, for internal energy, there is no such assumption, also means internal energy is even vague, more vague in that sense. There is no even there is no existence of such assumption that here this internal energy is this means internal energy always uh, can be understood by some relative sense suppose uh, let's say we are talking about electronic energy okay what i understood in this way so electronic we are let's say we are uh, talking about this uh, non covalent interaction energy okay Mm -hmm. So there we don't go down into the covalent bond breaking. Okay. Yeah. Now, if we go down to the covalent bond breaking, there is another point to go down that we can talking about nuclear and electronic energy. Okay. Sorry. Again, if we go down to the nuclear energy, there is quark and all those things will come out. So there yeah, is yeah. no point to stop. Yes, that's, that's yeah, that's our limitation. That's yeah, our that, that is the that is our limitation. Yeah, means we have no understanding. Means we uh, yeah. about the total is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why entropy. This is a assumption. Totally assumption. This third law. The entropy case also like third law in pure form. In purest form, we say that at temperature, if we go down to absolute zero, then for perfectly crystalline solid that don't have that. So such that we can 
say that the entropy of that perfectly crystalline solid at t tends to zero equal to zero. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the third law in purest form. But uh, mm -hmm. we know that for some solids at t, t tends to zero, there are some configurations possible, like mm -hmm. CO crystal, NO crystal. There are two types of configuration possible. Mm -hmm. So you can compute how much entropy will be at t tends to zero, like minus uh, k ln two. That's the that's kind of value we, we get now for CO crystal, NO crystal. Mm -hmm. So that is also based based on the number of configurations possible at t tends to zero. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And but in that sense also means uh, means mm -hmm. there is a common assumption for this uh, common postulate for this entropy, but uh, an inter energy has no such. Yeah, yeah. Um, inter energy is much more vague. Uh, mm -hmm. to... because internal energy we cannot compute from analytical form or mm -hmm. by using any methods uh, yes, yes, yes. Method, method has its limitation so, yes yeah I get it now. Mm -hmm. uh, for the free energy case obviously the y scale is not uh, fixed so we can mm -hmm. obviously see the y scale uh, in calculation means also yeah, in Can I stop sharing?